Hi everyone, welcome to my video for day three of the 2013 uh, Cheltenham Festival. Uh, this is seen as one of the quieter days of the festival because it's only got six races compared to seven on the other ones, uh, but it doesn't make it any less competitive and uh, no fingers crossed we'll pick up some winners. Well, we'll start off with the first race, which is the Juice and Novice Chase, and there was a big announcement on this one literally three or four hours ago. Uh, Martin Pipe Dynast, uh, favourite for the RSA, is now going for the Juice and Novices. Obviously, it's gone a lot softer at Cheltenham now, and uh, that's the reason behind it. They didn't want to go on the slog over three mile, but drop back to two and a half. Don't necessarily agree with that because Gulanis or Gulan or whatever it was has um, dropped from four miles to the three mile race. I think David Pipe fancied the idea of having a runner in each fancied, but fair enough. Uh, Din asked his favourite and rightfully so. He's won all of his starts impressively. He goes on the go and he's won around the course at Cheltenham over hurdles and fences. Everything and points to a great run from Dynast. Of the other ones, Module is an interesting one. Uh, he's improving all the time and was a course winner over hurdles. His, um, his chase um, form is pretty good. He's got a bit of form behind Rebel Rebellion, who did very, very well and won easily at Sandown yesterday. Uh, and I think he fell behind him when he was actually going pretty well, so he could run a very big race, currently around 6-7-1 to one module. Uh, of the bigger prices, Molotov for Nicky Henderson. Uh, he found three miles too far earlier in the season, um, but the trip uh, seems to be pretty much spot on for him, and the softer ground, the better. Uh, he got beat by Grandioso last time, and I think the reason behind that was the ground wasn't as soft as what he had at, say, Warwick before. But he's shown a liking for the course in the past, and Nicky Henderson does well with his novices, so Molotov could run a great race at 16-1. to one. Another interesting one, if he ends up going, obviously, over from Ireland again, is uh, Texas Jack, who won over Christmas and or went close over Christmas and then uh, beat the highly fancied um, with something Windermere from Jim Colotti, um, Lake Windermere or something, or Lord Windermere, um, at um well in Ireland last time out the trip is fine the ground is fine it, he's never come up against anything as classy as these but if you're looking for something from an Irish angle to go in for them this could be um, a really good shout but if I'm looking at a one two three here I think Dynast will take a lot of beating currently around two to one from module six seven to one and I can see Molotov run into the places at sixteen to one. Uh, quickly on to the Per Temps final. The per, per Temps final, once again, it's a horse, well, full of horses who are entered in multiple races, though there is a huge word going around for Sam Wynn from um, the Paul Nickel Yard, which is apparently could easily be £12 or £14 pounds well in for this. Uh, he actually beat Peddler's Cross in a uh, Bumpers for Jumpers race, and he's had um, he's had his injury problems, but he's come back. He's run very well before, and all of his runs have suggested that he does need the three-mile trip here. He's been running on very well. Uh, he could be absolutely thrown in. But, you know, these things can get beaten, so that's where I wonder. Shut the front doors, uh, been very consistent all season, but as a result, he's risen in the weights. But he still could have improvement left in him. I just I just don't know about three mile in the soft here uh, at the weights in which he's got here from the likes of Sam Winner. I could see him easily run into the places, but I actually prefer Sam Winner if I was looking at the two there. Of the bigger prices, old Furlong, is, uh, he, he's got this habit of flying in at the right time, hasn't he? Um, he's got a big weight but you know he's a classy little horse he stays very well the softer the better and you know a lot of people would like it when like when Buena Vista's done it in the past one of these uh, golden oldies goes in he could run a good race I can't see him winning but I can certainly see him running a good race but one that um, I do have a lot of time for is Medinus for the Alan King Yard um, a couple of runs back he only got beaten just around 10 lengths at the course by at Fisher's Cross, but he was actually given that horse eight pounds that day. At Fisher's Cross then came out again at the course and beat the legs of the new one and Coney Gree, who's out of the festival actually. I found out he was injured today, which is a shame. Um, and so that that was actually a good piece of form. He then went to Foss last next time in soft going and just stayed on all the way to the line, and uh, and won very comfortably in the end. I don't know, I just he's been kept fresh for this. He could be a real dark horse for this race. I could see him running into the places. But we're one, two, three here. I think Sam Winner will take a lot of beating from shut the door front door. Uh, but I really think Medina at about twenty, twenty five to one could run into the places. One of them two I would call it two feature races really of day uh, three is the Ryanair Chase. And with this one's, I've given it, I've left it a while before recording this video for this one because a lot have been double entered with a champion chase, etc. Uh, the favourite here is Q Card, um, and rightfully so, he's had a very good season. He blatantly didn't stay the three mile and soft ground um, around Kempton over Christmas. The worry here is here, two mile five, 
with the uphill finish. That'll take some getting, really. And while he did it very, very well, and when he beat Captain Chris at Ascot last time, Captain Chris did completely blunder away his chance uh, before staying on again. Um, there's also potentially some competition for the lead here in the likes of old Alberta's run, who's won this twice and went close last year. So uh, three to one cue cards, plenty short enough for me on old Alberta's run there. He's 12 to one. He could run a good race, but he's had his problems. He's been off for nearly a year and it will be one of the training performances of a lifetime at 12 to come back and go in here. Riverside Theatre won it last year under the most inspired Barry Geraghty ride anyone would ever see. Uh, Nicky Henderson even said afterwards how he even got placed pretty much is outstanding the bit that's put me off with riverside theater he usually runs not necessarily win but runs a really really good race first time out he didn't this year and he, he looked very very average um and the last run of last season when he went to aintree okay he was over the top by then he pulled up again there and it's one of those it's yeah you know he could come on leaps and bounds for the run but there's just those signs the warning bells are there for me that something might not have been all right with his preparation he's got good form on soft and he does seem to go better though on a bit better going really uh, 11 to 2 Riverside Theatre it's a fair price for a returning champion but I don't think he's going to go there one I was very sweet on but obviously there's been a lot to temper me on that one now is Champion Court who was running an absolute screamer in the King George uh, before the <laughs> the uh, petrol ran out and he uh, ended up being beaten a long way but you know he took the bold decision there to uh, really go and lay it up to the likes of um, Long Run and Captain Chris and paid the price but that was a pretty good run he was beaten at odds on last time uh, in a three horse race by Alazi, who's no world beater. And um but he's got good form over this trip. He only got beaten, I think, just under three lengths by uh, one of the Gold Cup favourites, um, Sir Deschamps. And uh, you know, that form's pretty good. I just wonder though with this horse, is he just below the best? I just don't know if he is the ultra ultra horse to uh you know go in in this type of race i can see him getting placed but i just don't know if he's up to winning my idea of the winner is uh it's a risky one i won't lie to you but you know this is uh, a horse that has got bags of potential his jumping seems to have got together and he goes very well on the soft ground he's gone in at the festival before in the supreme novices a few years ago and that horse is menorah um Menorah is, he's won over the distance before, in fact he beat Huntball over Christmas at Kempton very very convincingly, Huntball then went on to run a pretty solid race in the Argento really, um, and I think this could, uh, this really could be uh, the horse for the Ryanair, his jumping in his first season as a, uh, as a novice chaser was shocking, it was absolutely terrible, and he still runs some reasonable races in defeat, it all then came together at Aintree when he, uh, he won, and the, said, the Richard Johnson said the secret was then was the step up and trip. And that seems to have been the case again this year. Um, he run in the, I think it, he run the other day in the Denman Chase, as it's called now, the Aeon Chase. And ran on well for third. Three miles, I think, stretches him too far. But I think two and a half mile with a bit of dig in the ground. He's got good form on the course. That horse is going to take a lot of beating. And around 10 to 1, 9 to 1, uh, that's my idea of a horse I'd like to be backing in this race. So in terms of a 1, 2, 3, I think Menorah will be my pick uh, from Champion Court. And maybe Q Card staying on, possibly into a place. Uh, the big race, technically, of uh, day four is the World Hurdle, and it's the most open World Hurdle that we've ever seen, largely because Big Bucks isn't here to just turn up, win, and go home, which is uh, it's always been nice to see, but, you know, it gives a bit of interest, really, for everyone else. Uh, to start at the market, the head of the market is Oscar Whiskey at 7-2. to two. I've got two problems with this. One, Oscar Whiskey got beat by Rev de Civilla. Uh, last time out fur and square and two he's better on better ground that's why he always seems to go particularly well on the two and a half mile at Aintree where the ground's usually a bit better in April if the ground comes up on the soft side I can see Oscar Whiskey doing exactly what he did last last time being right there till towards the last flight and then fading off he wasn't right last time so even in soft ground I, can, I can't see him not finishing the place in but can I see him winning no I just don't think he's got what it's going to take to win here Peddler's Cross is an interesting one. His novice chase campaign was just ridiculously poor, to be honest with you. He won some, you know, egg and spoon races at Bangor and the likes, but when he came to Cheltenham itself, it just never really came off for him. Uh, he's had a pretty much, uh, I've had not a great start to the season as well in terms of injuries. He came back with a second beaten by Sam Winner in a jumper for bumpers race, which is pretty good form, I'd say, because Sam Winner's. Uh, a good horse and he then won a race at Musselburgh but he did come off the bridle 
a long way there. And yet, he, while he did stay on, the horse that came second, I think it was that day, has been turned over in another not very good race. Is he up to the standard of winning this? No, I don't think he is. I think the confidence has been knocked out of him looking at his jumping last time from the chase campaign and you know it, apparently he's done a lot of schooling hopefully he's a lot happier himself he's a horse alike I can't see him going in here um wonderful charms running for Paul Nichols one problem I've got about this is he's had one UK race which okay he won but he's completely as I said he's had one UK race and even in France he's never raced over two and a half mile is he going to stay the three mile plus trip here up the hill I don't know is the answer I get the impression they've thrown this horse in purely because big bucks isn't going really um eight to one i think it's the nickels factor there I, it's a horse if you actually read my, vid my video uh, about novices to follow he was actually in there but you know is he gonna step up in the world hurdle no i don't think so solwitz is another one great horse but he's had a big injury layoff he's come back looking pretty good never been over three mile especially in soft going i can't see that well smad place uh he seems to be getting better um, this as the season's going along, but he was hammered by 14 lengths by Rev de Civila last time. Can I see him reversing the form? No, I can't. Um, so there it comes to the horse that I think will win, which is Rev de Civila. It's going to come up soft. He has done nothing but improve for the switch to hurdles very much in the same uh, mold as big books really i'm not saying rev de civil is even half as good as big books is but if it comes up soft he'll go from the front he'll take a lot of pecking he's won over the course and distance beating the likes of the favorite oscar whiskey and the time out before that at ascot he was even better i can't believe i've just checked the price and he's currently around nine to two five to one in places that can even be backed each way if you wanted and uh can i see him coming out the first three no so my idea of a one two three it's not exactly original it's rev de civil from oscar a whiskey with smad place maybe going in to fill the places again uh, the burn group plate is another one which we can't spend too much time on because it's horses entered in multiple ones though the confidence behind hunt ball is gathering uh, at a pace at a rate of knots um he won so easily at the festival last year when i tipped him up actually on here at eight to one and um he is the class element of the race the trainers basically come out today i saw it on at the races and said i'm more confident in this than i was going into cheltenham last year and he was confident last year and his owner was confident last year and the pair of them are majorly confident in going on here two and a half miles is pretty much his optimum trip i don't think soft ground's a problem because in the argento as once again anthony honeyball um pointed out he was the last one off the bridle he just doesn't stay the three mile plus trip but over two and a half miles i think it's absolutely fine even the ground yeah he likes good ground but he won't not go on the soft and at currently around six to one he is very, very interesting. The favourite is Bally Nagur for David Pipe. It's run once in in, uh, in the UK. It was very, very easy winner. The thing is, this horse could be anything. He's run once. He could be an absolute thrown-in handicap snip, which we've seen before uh, with the Pipe team and stuff. So at 4-1, to one, the bookmakers surely aren't taking any chances there. Uh, but I can see him running a great race. Two big prices to look out for. Nadia de la Vega, other than the fact that he unseated here last time, he's won around the course before and been placed on a couple of times since. He's dropped down in the weights. Nicky Henderson's a quite a shrewd trainer, which goes without saying. He could run a big race. While Zaynar as well for the David Pipe Yard, he's 25 to 33 to 1. He can go very well fresh. He's got a pretty nice weight of 11 stone 1 as it stands at the moment. He's gone well at the course before. He's got a touch of class. Yeah, there's it's jumping issues, which which is uh, renowned throughout his career. But do you know what? There's worse outsider bets if you want to have one in the big field there. But the three, yes, but the three I would concentrate on will probably be Hunt Ball, uh, Bally Nagur and Nadia De La Vega, which finally takes us on to, very quickly, onto the Kim Yorker, because once again, everyone's entered a dozen times. This is an amateur rider's race, so can throw up the occasional... Um, upset uh upset super duty there's a word going around the mccain yard for this this has been uh it's um planned for a while they've booked up a very decent amateur to ride it it's six to one and if you go on the words which has been going around for weeks uh where the, the word on the street on it really i suppose you'd say was the softer the better it's going softer so this is no reason why you shouldn't run a good race uh prince of pirates came back to form last time and seems to be coming to hand at the right time uh he hasn't got a, a track record around the course so you know a bit of element of trust got to be taken on it but the ground's coming to him um right so at 10 to 1 he could run a big race alfie sharon is also entered in the jlt which could be his first um 
preference but once again he's got good course and ground form and this race looks easier than the race he won last year so it could go very well but one at a big price my idea of a winner galaxy rock he's got good course form the ground is absolutely fine and the trip should be perfect so one two three galaxy rock prince of pirates and super duty day four soon many thanks